So it's a design, it's inspired by the shape found in a Toblerone chocolate bar or in uh, fluorite, the state min mineral of Illinois. The proposed 93-story Wanda Vista Tower features unobstructed views and will make a serious mark on Chicago's skyline. So we're all wondering, is this building going to live up to uh, Chicago's standards, high standards of great architecture. And with us right now to talk about it from the Chicago Tribune, architecture critic Blair Kamen. Great Blair, to be here, Good Corey. to see you. Yeah. Great to be here. So everybody's all kind of fired up about this building. And uh, you say that the tweaks they've made, the improvements they've made since the original renderings came out, vastly improved. They've really raised their game. How so? I think that this tower right now is a much more striking and fluid design in contrast to the um, John Hancock Center or the Willis Tower, these kind of dark macho buildings. Right. This is kind of like a woven fluid building that would, with its step back profile and undulating walls, would really um, bring something very distinct to the skyline. Now that's an earlier view. That's what we're improving upon. That, that facade, that rendering looks like a series of zippers running up and down the facade with inset balconies. Right. So they've really raised the level of their game since and, then. And they've gone to sort of a greenish tint to the building as well. Did you right. like that? I do. Yeah. And, and there's a reason for these undulating shapes. The idea is, the, the geometry is called a frustum, ah. which is, now there's a word you don't hear. No, I have not heard that one. Use that in a sentence. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. right. It's a truncated pyramid, essentially. Okay. And, the, and the truncated pyramids are stacked. Some are conventional, others are inverted. Um, okay. And so they're stacked up and down to create views that orient downward or upward. And um, when you put them all together in three interconnected high-rises, they create a very unique shape of bold setbacks, much like the Willis Tower, but also a light reflecting, undulating surface, not unlike, in some ways, like Trump Tower. Right. Um, different, different articulation. I mean, that depends more on the, the vertical fins on the building. This doesn't have those. but. It would be a building that would change constantly in the light. You also talk about how you like the way this building sort of fits into that uh, that uh, Wacker Drive area, and it doesn't yeah. just stand out all by itself like a trophy building, like some sometimes we see in these newer cities, right. say in in Asia, in, in China. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's two things that this does on the skyline. It fits into the so-called Wacker Wall on East Wacker Drive, mm -hmm. and yet as it, it really stands out on the skyline. The, that top of the building, the up the topmost tier sure. is very thin, only 80, eight, an 80 foot square, in oh. other words, 80 feet on each okay. side. As you come northbound on Lakeshore Drive, it would really stand out because it would, you would essentially have, as you're coming north from the Field Museum, you would have an unimpeded view of it. So it would really be a bold statement on the skyline, unlike the, archi the architect whose name I should have mentioned is Jeannie Gang. Sure. Her aqua tower has these very sensuous, curving balconies. But it's not really a bold skyline statement because it's kind of hemmed in. It's hard to find it, really. Right. Like on the Lakeshore Drive, you can right. you see it for three seconds and That's it's gone. Right. 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 Yeah. This, in contrast, would really be a standout. And it would be at 1,144 feet if it's certified. There it is. Well, no, again, that's the previous design. Is it? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. That's we're, okay. They're improving on that. We're trying. <laughs> well, so, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow and talk about the new design. Uh, but but, uh, but it, this would be the third tallest building in Chicago if it's certified yeah. and the world's tallest building designed by a woman-owned firm. So the other question comes up when we see these plans, a lot of times it's like the thing never gets built. But th in this right. case, there's a pretty good chance it's going to get built, right? I think there is. The yeah. client uh, for this is Magellan Development Group in Chicago and the Wanda Group of China. Right. The Wanda Group is rolling in dough. They have they are the one of the largest or if not the largest real estate developer in China. They own AMC theaters in the United States. Yeah. They have okay. a lot of money. And with the Chinese real estate market slowing, they want to invest overseas. And so, you know, this is a $950 million investment, almost a billion dollars. It's, it's a big chunk of change and a big building. And Big Wanda, as I have nicknamed Big it, Wanda, <laughs> all right. Is looking pretty good. <laughs> a, a, a skyscraper named Wanda, not a fish right. named Wanda. That's excellent. <laughs> Blair, always good to see you. Thanks okay. for coming good in. Good to be here. We'll be uh, watching with great interest as this tower progresses. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you so much. Right. Blair came in. All right. Chicago Tribune will have more of Good Day Chicago after a quick break. Stay with us.